Hey guys, this is Matt from LastChanceTackle.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the Carolina Rig. It's a really, really good technique to fish when you need to search to find fish if you don't know where they're at or cover water in a quick amount of time, maybe for tournament situations. It's a very easy technique. You can take your kids out doing it, your grandparents out doing it, your friends doing it. It's very, very simple. And with a little bit of patience and stuff like that, it's going to be a quick shortcut into learning how to fish structure or deep cover. Now, with Carolina rigging, we're going to talk about the rod and the reel, first of all. A lot of guys still like a 7-foot rod. I don't really like a 7-foot rod, and there's a couple different reasons why. I favor an 8-foot rod or something 7-6 or over. The reason being, say you make a long cast or say you're deciding to drag the Carolina rig deep or whatever. You may put the bait back 50, 60 yards behind the boat. When you do get bit with a short rod, when you go to either wind down and set the hook, you may not be able to pick up that much line. You may not even put that hook in the fish. With a longer rod, you can pick up way more line, which translates into a more powerful hook set. Uh, with a high gear reel, a long rod, and getting your bait out a long distance, you can wind down to pick up line, you can use your rod to pull line, you can drive a hook home very, very easy. The seven foot rod will fish the bait just fine, but I think you're going to be more uh, more beneficial, a little bit better off if you fish a little bit longer rod. Me personally, I fish a Dobbins 804. Um, this rod's an 8 foot 4 power rod, it's, which means it has a little bit of tip to it, but the whole rod's pretty much a broomstick. When I got that bait out a long ways, and I'm dragging and all of a sudden I get bit, when I pick up line and set the hook, the tip shuts off and it's all backboard. It's all hook set, all driving that hook home. I pair that up with a 7 to 1 uh, Revo SX. Now, with a 7 to 1 reel, like I said before, it, it's, it's good for you to fish the Carolina rig with it because it picks up a lot of line fast. You can fish a uh, Shimano, you can fish a Daiwa, whatever. A 7 to 1 gear ratio reel is awesome for this technique. As far as line size goes, that's the biggest debate for almost every technique. Some guys like mono, some guys like flora, some guys like braid. Some guys like throwing light line, whereas some guys like throwing heavy line. Me personally, I love, like I said before in other videos, I love a braid to leader combination. Right now what I do is I fish, you know, 30 pound P line, or 30 pound power pro, uh, rather, and I actually splice off to about a three foot section of 15 pound fluorocarbon. Then I go and tie my whole rig up and usually, you know, I, I pick my leader size depending upon the structure and cover I'm, I'm intending to fish. Now let me back up a little bit. You heard me say power pro to 15 pound fluorocarbon. The reason why I do that with the braid is I don't want my braid to be in contact with any rock whatsoever. If braid comes in contact with rock, it basically increases your chance to either fray up, break off, whatever. It doesn't really do well with uh, hard edge surfaces. Think about a knife blade. Put a knife blade up to a, a section of uh, any type of string or cloth. It's going to fray it. It's going to cut it. Same thing with the rocks. It'll do the same thing. So by having that 15 pound test, it acts as the you know basically a buffer between my braid and my sinker. The, the, uh, the fluorocarbon is very, very abrasion resistant. With 15 pound tests, I can drag it through rocks, still get bit, put a hook in a fish and never have to worry about it. You will want to change up, but for the most part, you're good to go. You don't need that much. I usually run three foot or, or four foot and I, I basically cut it down to no less than you know 15 inches. As far as the actual rig goes, the Carolina rig is nothing more than a rig designed to place the sinker well ahead of the bait. Um, and not allow it to slide down and touch the weight. If it slid down and touched the weight, basically you got a Texas rig. So what it is, is there's many sinkers out there that you can fish and every size basically depends on where you're fishing in the water column. If I'm fishing 70 foot of water, of course I'm going to want to go with a heavier sinker. It's going to allow me to basically feel the bottom a lot better. If I'm fishing 5 foot of water with a Carolina rig, uh, basically a split shot style. I'll run a lighter weight. That way I'm not dragging bottom, hanging up on everything. It's a little bit more buoyant. It comes to the water a little bit better. It comes over cover better. Um, I'm a big fan of the Mojo style Carolina rig weights. It comes through cover exceptionally well. You can still fish egg sinkers. You can still fish tungsten weights. Whatever you want to do, it's all up to you. But uh, I'm just telling you, this weight right here comes through cover very easy. In the Mojo lineup, there's another weight called a Rock Hopper. It basically has an offset drilled hole where you put your line through. It ticks over top of rocks. Now it's really, really good if you're fishing like the dam or pretty heavy riprap, stuff like that. But uh, for general use, I stick with a standard mojo. Now, second thing with the Carolina rig is you have the weight and you have some sort of a stopper in between. 
That way it'll protect your knot right here above the swivel. You can use a bead, you can use a bobber stopper, depending upon what your fish are dealing with or how your fish are you know, reacting. Some fish do not want noise, so I eliminate the bead and I'll go with the bobber stopper. Some fish do want a little bit of clack, so I'll go with the bead. Personal preference. So there you have it. You got your sinker, you got your bead. The next step with the Carolina rig is your swivel. You can use whatever swivel you want. Um, you can use a barrel swivel, you can use a ball bearing swivel. It does not matter. Um, I'm a big fan of the Spro swivels. Very, very small, but high, um, high breaking strength. Pick your favorite swivel and get after it. Now with your leader. Um, your leader will depend on how your fish want the bait. The closer and smaller your leader is, the faster your bait's going to be moving under the water. The longer, um, yeah, basically the longer the leader you're going to have it, the more, the slower your bait's going to be moving. So if you're fishing in the middle of winter and the fish do not want it moved whatsoever, I'll run like a six to eight foot leader. That's where that longer rod comes in handy. I'm able to cast that longer leader. Very, very simple. So. Basically, pick your leader length. Good starting points, three to four feet, three to five feet. Uh, it works fine. It works all times of the year. And you just depend. You just cut your leader length depending upon, like I said, your fish. With your hook, basically your hook and your bait size are going to vary um, year or day to day, pretty much month to month. Some days I'm going to want to fish a bigger bulky bait, so I'm going to fish an offset hook, which is a hook that uh, or an offset wide gap hook, which is a hook that has a wider gap between shank and hook point. Um, other times of the year, I'm going to be fishing a smaller bait, so I'm going to run, you know, either a straight shank worm hook, like a rebar hook by uh, Robo Worm, or I'm going to be fishing this is a standard offset worm hook, like I have right here. Let the fish tell you what they want, you know, based upon bait selection, whatever. As far as baits go, it is open to basically any bait you want to fish. You can fish beaver style baits, little crawdad style baits. You can fish brush hogs like what I have right here. You can fish a multitude of baits. I mean, ikas, whatever you want to do. Let the fish tell you what they want. Find out what your fish are eating at that given time. If they're eating, you basically shad down deep, put a fluke on there. It's going to fish the same way. It's, it's a very, very good way to fish. Um, and this, like I said, just let the fish tell you what they want. But there you have it. That's that's a basic Carolina rig. Now, there's many ways to fish a Carolina rig. Um, you can drag it. You can drift it uh, with the wind. You can cast it. You can fish it downhill, uphill, whatever. Let your fish tell you what they want. If the fish don't want it move very much, what I'll do is I'll throw it out there and I'll just keep constant tension with the bait and letting that wind push me. If you have a slight wind for the day. Uh, other times, I'm actually fishing it pr fairly quick. I can increase my sinker size, bring it across the bottom a lot faster, or vice versa. If they want it slower, I can fish a lighter si size sinker and drag it really slow. Um, but Carolina rig fishing is very, very simple. It's basically dragging a bait across the bottom and making repetitive casts down the bank until you find a good group of fish. Once you find a good group of fish, say you're getting them on this and you want to see if you can get a bigger bite out of the equation, you may throw a jig. Uh, you may throw a swim bait, something like that. It's a good search tool to find good concentrations of fish on any given body of water around the nation. But uh, there you have it. That's, crank, or that's Carolina rig fishing. Um, as always, we thank you for your business and look forward to helping you guys become better anglers.